गुड आफ्टरनून मिस सागरिका मिश्र एंड भावेश सर सो टुडे आई वेलकम मिस सागरिका मिश्र रेस्पेक्टेड एकेडमिक काउंसिलर ऑफ ओ एस ओ यू कंप्यूटर साइंस सो आई वेलकम टू स्टार्ट द सेशन ऑन वेब टेक्नोलॉजी ब्लॉक टू वेब एप्लीकेशन सो मैम टूडे डिस्कस जावा स्क्रिप्ट सो आई हैंड ओवर द सेशन टू मैम मैम प्लीज स्टार्ट द सेशन थैंक यू so good morning everybody i hope uh, in the last class whatever we have discussed uh, that you have go through clearly and uh, in between this week i don't think you people have any doubt relating to uh, css as well as javascript right so as sir has uh, introduced uh, we today we are going to learn about our web technology block 2 block to consist of two unit that is one is css the style sheet and another is your javascript so we have successfully able to understand what is the usage of css as well as why we need a javascript right so just to give a preview as there will be a long gap between the previous class and the current class so i just want to give a refresh of uh, whatever we have discussed earlier okay so what is a javascript whenever we want to execute some program some huge coding concept behind the browser that we need the programming concept the ops concept that is your object oriented programming concept right and for that to binding any programming language with the uh, browser or with the html tag we are taking the help of the javascript and remember javascript not is not a scripting language it is a virtual programming language that is the only language which is understandable by any browser directly why it is understandable because it is binded with the help of html tag so it is easier for the browser to get the instruction from the javascript programming right so in the previous class we have completely discussed about our uh, statements that is your control flow statements conditional statements why we need and in which scenario we will choose uh, which uh, control statement as because there are various type of control statement so according to our usability we can choose any one of them okay so in today's class we will go going to learn about another very important aspect of programming language that is called as your function not only in javascript also in any programming language function play a very much vital role regarding execution of a program so in today's class we are going to learn about what is function how we can utilize function inside javascript and how it will be give the output okay similarly how function will related to event handling and what is event handling that also we will going to discuss in today's class okay so first of all let me uh, share my screen i hope it is visible yes ma'am visible thank you sir so let's begin with uh, the concept of function in javascript okay before going to javascript function first of all we have to understand what is a function and why it is named as function not some other name so as it is defined function is a group of reusable codes Re uh, just give a uh, emphasis on the term that is reusable code that means 
there is a bunch of code is there and we want to execute that bunch of code many time inside a program so to avoid rewriting of the similar type of code multiple time we can store it in some area or in some uh, uh, you can say that in some binding in some code and that binded code will be executed without writing once more okay so that is called as your function function is a group of reusable code specifically binded with a name that means whatever bunch of code you are categorized into a group you have to give a name to that group okay and that name will be known as your function name okay so i have told you in our previous class how you can defer a variable and a function because as a user or as a programmer you have to give a name and there is a naming specification for variable as well as for as function the, the specification whatever utilized in variable that is also applicable in function what is that you have to start with a alphabet you cannot start with a numeric value you cannot use any special characters except underscore so whatever the rules and regulations for giving a variable name that is also applicable in your function name okay so how you can defer a variable and a function function always followed by a pair of parentheses right you have to remember whenever there will be some name and followed by a pair of parentheses that means you can able to understand no this is a function okay so we are binded with a name and can be called anywhere inside the function once you have written a bunch of code inside any uh, function name then that function name can be utilized at any part of the code let uh, forget about your javascript just take an example of your c++ code right so whenever we are writing a program let's suppose i have to add five different number each time or multiple time so except writing five different variable each time five different new variable each time and then i have to add those and what i can do i can create a function in the name of add where i will accept five different variable and i will add them and the output will be written okay so what is the utilization of function here if i will not use function and suppose i have to add five different number 100 times then i have to create 100 different number of variables okay i cannot reuse the variable because i have to keep the output as storage but if i am using a function then no need to create any new variable you have to only call the function you have to only execute the function at that time and with the five different variable name each time whenever it will be called it will take five different new value so that similar bunch of code will be reused multiple time even if it is 2 even if it is 5 or even if it is 10 whatever be the time at any time and anywhere inside the program the function can be called remember before calling a function at some part you must have to define the function which is called as definition of function you first you have to specify what the function is going to do okay so that we part will called as your defining a function and when we are calling that function when we want to use that function execute that function that part is called as your calling a function okay so why we need the function it helps to manage a code in modular form look there will be a most familiar term modular in our computer science world so what is a module module is a separate part that will be kept separate as a group and identified with some speciality that will be called as module so why a uh, function is called as modular form because in the name of the function 
some bunch of code which will execute some task will be binded so that bunch of code that bunch of code may be consist of two line may be consist of five line or may be consist of 100 line whatever be the number of instruction or line that bunch of code are binded and introduced with that single function name so during execution whenever the interpreter will get the function name it will automatically transfer to that binded code okay so that's why we can able to kept some bunch of code separately with a specific name called as your function name and that's why it is called as in modular form okay so it helps him uh, to manage a code in modular form so that the need of writing similar code again and again can be avoided so what is the basic objective of using a function to avoid rewriting of code that is the one and only thing that is the most objective of a function why we use function or what is the need of using a function you can say that no we want to stop rewriting of same code or similar code hence we are using a function okay so as other programming language have two type of function here in javascript also there are two different type of function okay as i am here specifying two different type so you can able to differentiate what are the usage of built in type and what are the usage of user defined type okay so in previous class whatever we have discussed remember always we are mostly writing the common line to print some statement that is document dot write within the parenthesis the statement okay we are using this most oftenly so what is the write remember write is a built in function okay so write there will be a pair of parenthesis in between which we are writing the code so write is a built in function so how one can know whether it is a built in function and user defined function let's uh, discuss about that by definition which function is treated as your built in function those are already written in the core file of javascript that is not written by any programmer whenever the javascript is designed whatever code is written for some specific uh, function those are called as your built in function okay it is also called as your primitive type of function so what is the meaning of primitive that means no programmer no user are allowed to change the type of that function you can only directly use just like a ready made dress that is sold out in some shop okay you have to just pay and bring that out you cannot change its color you cannot change its design right so that is already in a specific design format what you have to do you have to only take it and use it for your specification so that type of uh, function is called as your built in function for example your document dot write function or some other function that we are using as your alert message alert function these are some of the common built in function okay so what primitive means you can understand that primitive means that cannot be changeable that cannot be edited whatever it is written in the core program or in the core uh, specification that has should not be changed okay similarly the other option as because built in is always rigid we have to follow its uh, specification only we cannot change uh, according to our program or our website page so there is another option provided by javascript to create your own function what i want to do how i want to do that will be dependent on my code so i can also create my own function so whatever function created by a user or a programmer that will be called as your user defined function right 
so it is called as a non primitive category that means once you have written your function you may change it you may edit it or you may modify it according to your specification so there will be a flexibility of changing the code inside a user defined function i may be take one parameter i may be take two parameter i may be take no parameter so according to this specification you can change your function so that will be in a non primitive category now when i am talking about a parameter you must have some doubt related to parameter okay so that we will discuss before that this is the definition of your function so what is the uh, main focus function always started with a keyword that is called function that means you have to write the function the word function then only you have to give a function name okay so the function which is also written inside the script the type is javascript okay so function name here you can give any name just like we are giving variable name whatever specification naming specification is there in variable it is also applicable in your function right right so the first parenthesis begin the last parenthesis end and inside that we have to give the parameter but it is optional there is also function without parameter which we will discuss and also demonstrate how function will work so after that a pair of curly braces will be started and in between what are the instruction that is going to be executed while calling a function is written inside here okay so that means what task you have to perform what number of instruction you want to execute for a task that has to be written in between the pair of curly braces okay after ending the curly braces your function definition that is your function body part is completed and simultaneously the script tag is also closed okay so just take an example look here i am using function and i am giving a name say hello and there will be only a pair of parentheses there is nothing inside the pair of parentheses so it is a non parametric function or function without parameter without argument sometime it is called as parameter sometime it is called as argument but both the thing are same okay so here i have created in my example say hello as my function name and what i have written in the curly braces i have written document dot write and hello learners that means in my example i have take the help of both user defined function as well as built in function so how can you know which one is user defined and which one is hello uh, sorry which one is user defined function here for write we are not specifying anything above this directly we are using the write function okay how you and go, you people are going to know about write as a function because write is followed by a parenthesis also okay so it is a example of your built in type function i cannot change anything i have to use the write with the document uh, folder and i have to start the double code whatever uh, information i want to write i will do that and i have to close that and end the para parenthesis okay this is the default format i cannot change anything inside the write but here say hello is my own function i am the creator of that function so i can change its definition here i am not giving any argument or parameter i may update this say hello same function by giving the parameter so it is of non primitive category okay so what are the basic uh, objective not only objective what are the basic features of a function and why or how we calling the function so to invoke a function somewhere later in the script it simply need to write the name of the function followed by a pair of parenthesis okay in the previous slide we have only 
demonstrate about the definition of the function how you create the function okay till now we are not using how to call the function or how to use the function so that is the thing how we use the function we simply need to write the name of the function followed by a parenthesis so in my example say hello is my function so whenever i want to execute this particular line i have to call this say hello function with its name okay that is called as your calling the function we will see it in our program demonstration next user can pass input values to the function through parameters so why do we need a parameter if for executing something we want some input data from the outside of the function then that can be inserted through the parameter or through the argument okay so argument is again a variable argument is an again a variable which will get the value when the function is called okay so when we are defining the function we have to give the variable name but when we are calling the function we have to give the value name we will see it in our program just before going to the demonstration i want to complete the theoretical part of the function so that you can able to relate the example with your fundamental theory right so function can be called both without and with parameter in the previous definition we have used without parameter function and in later example we will use with parameter function but that has to be mentioned while defining the function at the time of defining if you are using parameter during calling you have to give the input value at the de uh, def defining the function time if you are not using parameter then you cannot give any input value during calling of the function so whether you want to use function with parameter or function without parameter according to your need you have to specify that during the definition of the function okay in javascript function definition is mostly written inside the head tag there will be a, a reason behind that because in javascript whenever we are executing the body tag that means we are working on the browser area okay the interpreter is ready to work over the browser area the screen where we have to execute our program so whatever uh, function or instruction is needed to work over the area that has to be priorly decide or that has to be priorly written hence the function if you want to use a function in your javascript you have to define that it is better to define that in the head tag in between the head tag okay then at the body tag when you want to execute that program, that function you can call that function simply so there is there will be a specification that the definition specifically is mostly written inside a head tag okay next function can send its value to outside through written statement just like parameter is used to get input from the outside to the function similarly whatever we are executed inside the function we want to use that output outside the function so for that the written statement is used this is a keyword written whatever result you are, uh, are able to calculate inside the function you can send it outside the function through the written statement fine so function can be also called inside another function as like control statement or uh, our for loop or nested for loop similarly inside one function we can also able to call another function that part will be called as your nested function function inside another function is called as your nested function okay but there will be a rule for nested function for whatever function suppose function 1 is there and inside function 1 i am using function 
that means the definition part of function 2 must be written prior to function 1 that means whenever we want to use or the interpreter will want to execute some code its definition must be already understandable by the interpreter we will discuss it more precisely in the example part okay so function plays a vital role while using the event handling concept we will go to the event handling concept but before that how function will be helpful for event handling that we will discuss in our demonstration part okay so first of all uh, let take an example function without parameter so here as written very simple without parameter what we have discussed in our slide also just simply take a, i have taken a example or with a name say hello function simply write a single line inside that function okay and remember this function is present inside the script tag inside the head tag okay so my function definition is kept inside the head part okay now when we are starting with the body tag i am here using a form tag to display how the function will be execute so what i have done i have taken a button with the input tag i have taken an button and when the user will click on that an event will occur that will be the on click event so whenever the event will occur it will automatically call the function so say hello with parenthesis is my function name and here i am calling the function and where is the definition of function that will be present in the header part okay so before executing this part this calling of function the program must consist of the definition part of the function so that it will be easier for the interpreter to understand what is this because when we are writing the right function there is nothing to specify because the interpreter is already known about this right okay it is inside its core program so it is a built in type the interpreter is well understandable about the right but interpreter is unknown about the say hello as because it is created by the programmer so it will search the code for its definition part what this thing will work what this thing will execute that will be searched and that will be searched through a function keyword okay <coughs> excuse me so similarly when we are uh, calling the function <coughs> this function will directly refer to its definition part and <coughs> whatever uh, instruction is written inside that code that will be executed so let's see <coughs> just we will give a name just a second so h t and n
look here the program is executed and there is the button whenever we are clicking on that button whatever written inside my function that will be successfully executed okay so on click that is an event so whenever i will click on that it will call the say hello function and whatever code written inside the say hello that will be executed so what we have uh, executed in uh, what we have written in say hello that will be document dot write hello learners or hello there okay so it will execute the specific code fine so let's take the second one function with parameter i just want to excuse from uh, you people for 2 minutes as my laptop is out of charge so i have to put the charger on the clock which i have forgot so just give me 2 uh, minutes okay i'm very sorry for the inconvenience okay ma'am there is no problem please all dear learners are requested to put their question on chat box so you can discuss at the end of the session with ma'am लर्नर मान को रिक्वेस्ट जदि से किसी क्वेश्चन अच्छी तेल से चैट बॉक्स रे लिखे आम लास्ट सेशन लास्ट रे मैडम को सहित डिस्कस करवा Okay, so let's begin from where we have left, and I'm very sorry for this. Hello. Hello. Am Hello, I... ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's me, Anubha Panda. Yes, Anubha. Yeah, yes, Anubha. Please tell. Uh, can Can you uh, say to me in JavaScript uh, why you using in HTML code? uh anuva we have a question answer session and uh, we can uh, discuss uh, at that time also here as the class says the time bounded let me uh, finish what we have to or we supposed to talk today right so just wait for anubhav. the answer anubhav i may session end re i could discuss kariba hala ebe my madam ku class continue kariba pai ami deba okay thank you ma'am please continue my screen is visible to all yes ma'am Not... visible okay thank you sir so in the second example we are going to use function with parameter function where we want to input some outside data and we want to execute right so as in the example i have taken some input value there will be a name value and there will be a age value so whenever the say hello function will be execute it need two different input data one is for name and another is for age remember here name and age are variables that means you have to give the data according to the variable okay 
so in normal c++ or in java we mostly use the data type with the variable that means whenever we are using the argument we have to define the argument type but inside javascript there will be a relaxation of the data type that is the huge headache in other language which is most relaxed in javascript here we can directly use any variable name and whatever data we will put on that that variable will belongs to that category of data type okay so i am using here two different argument inside the say hello function so inside the uh, body part of the function what i have uh, doing i am using the value of name as well as age okay so in the statement i have written here whatever value i will given that name will be display name is that age value will be displayed and the years old so this message will be displayed whenever this say hello function will be executed but in place of name and age whatever value we are going to give in during calling of the function that will be displayed okay so where we call the function inside the body part we are calling the function look here whenever i am calling the function i have to give two value why because i have defined as two parameter argument for this function so i have to by default give to value to that function without this value your program will not able to execute or either it will doesn't show anything the interpreter cannot understand why this say hello is used okay so you have to give as number of or as type of specification whatever you are defining in the definition part so here in the name field i have using the name ram or ram and in the age field i have using 20 okay so when this function will execute whenever i will click on the button so let's see whether it will be executed or not file save as dot so i have a statement uh, written in the body tag click the following button to call the function and there is the button when i will click on the button i will get the message but here whatever written in my name let's see look whatever uh, written in my calling function time the value that is automatically accepted by the name variable and that value will be executed inside the function so in the place of name it is uh, displayed as ram and in the place of age it is displayed as 20 so normally uh, the question arise where we want the parameterized function if from outside world you want to receive some some input inside the function and want to execute that value there you need the parameter okay similarly in the next case we will see how the function will return the statement how the function will send its own data its own result to the outside world okay remember two thing when you want the data outside world to inside the function you have to use the parameter similarly whenever you want to use the function value outside the function there you need the return statement okay so let's uh, see another example where we have simultaneously uses the nested function with the return statement
executing is very much simple the main thing is how you able to understand the each and every line of the code okay so here our new code uh, just uh, let me make it precise so that you can able to find the difference So here, this is the example of your nested function. That means function inside function. So let's see what we have written. Simply, I have taken a function in the name of first function. Okay, and whether it is parameterized or non-parameterized, as there are arguments are there, there are variables are there in between the parentheses. That means it is a parameterized function. Function with parameter. Okay. So inside this function, inside the first function, what number of line I am going to execute? I am going to execute one and two. Okay. So in the, inside the first function, once again I have created another user-defined function in the name of square. And what is the number of parameter for square? It is a single parameter. That means single. Whenever we want to execute square, we have to give a single input value. So what the square will do? It will just uh, multiplied by itself. Okay. So uh, just x square. So it will be x into x. Whenever I have to calculate square of something, I will simply call the square function. Okay. Then what I have done? Look inside this square x. I am not using a or b. What I have used? I have created another variable, and what the variable will do? It will just uh, square off itself, right? So in the second line, I have used a return statement, simply a keyword return. That means whatever the first function will execute, that has that value has to be sent to outside the first function. So. What value I want to send? I just want to calculate the, the square of a and square of b using the square function, and whatever it will be value, I will simply add it and send it. So in a single line of statement, I have performed three different things. First, I am using the square function to calculate the value of a square. Similarly, I have using the square function to calculate the value of b square. Then I have added the value of a square plus b square, and finally, whatever result I will get, I have to return that result outside the first function. Okay, so now we can able to understand how inside a single function we can able to create another user defined function. as well as we can use the built in function okay so in the second function what i have done i have called the first function okay so before that i have created a variable result and inside the result i have called the first function with two value why because here two parameter is there so two input value is needed so i have given two input value one is 2 another is 3 that means now the value of a is 2 and the value of b is 3 right so when we are calling this first function automatically this code will be executed so again whatever value of a that will be passed to x and calculated as x square as because we are calling the square function with a variable here so this value will be 
two square that is four. Similarly, this value will be three square that is nine. So four plus nine that is thirteen. Right. So the output of first function is thirteen, and that output is need to be sent outside the function. So outside the function or outside first function means it is in second function. So that value will be kept by this result variable. That thirteen value, whatever is calculated in the first function, that will be stored automatically in the result value. This thing you have to be remember. Whenever you are using return function to send some data outside the function, there should be a variable is there which will hold the output result. Okay, so. Here, without the result variable, even if the first first function will return something, there will be no place for storing that data. So for this, we are creating the result. Now we are displaying the result. Okay. Now, when we call the second function, just like in the body of the previous program, on click event, the second function will be called. Okay, during the body tag, there is nothing related to first function or square function. The simple thing is, it only called the second function. And when the second function is executing, during execution, it will be called first function. When the first function is executed during execution, it will be called the square function. So inside one function, another function is there. Another function, another function is there. So hence, it is called as your nested function. Okay. The as we have already calculated, the result we supposed to be is thirteen. So let me save it. File save as. dot html right the call function button is there which is calling the second function so whenever we will click on the button it will call the second function the second function will call the first function with value 2 and 3 now the first function will receive 2 and 3 as a and b and it will execute its code inside the first function the square function will calculate 2 square and 3 square and the addition will be 13 so hence the output 13 is there i guess with this uh, demonstration or with this example you can able to understand how function parameter return statement and nested function are related to each other including your event handling okay so what is event handling this is event handling whenever we are creating an event mouse click is an event okay so you whenever the user will click on that event then only the function will be called if i will execute the program and i will just sit like that i will not do anything i will not click on the button then the function will not execute because it is not called when it will be called whenever there will be a on click event will occur okay so in this way your function is very much uh, interrelated or uh, with your uh function handling or sorry event handling that's why i have written here function plays a vital role while using the event handling concept i hope you have a clear idea about uh what is function without parameter function with parameter function when we want to accept input to the function and when we want to send output to the function okay next we will move to your event handling concept there are various of event handling concept are used in javascript and specifically html5 will provide a bunch of event handling but before going to that we have to first understand what is an event so 
as the definition wise event is an activity simply an activity what the user will do during execution of a program that will be called as an event so event is an activity which instruct the interpreter to execute some task or code so whenever any event will occur it is always associated behind it with a bunch of code so if you want to execute that bunch of code you have to create that event and whenever that event will occur the interpreter will redirect to execute that code so that part is called as event handling event means activity and what action is performed on behalf of that activity that is called as event handling okay just we will take an a uh, funny example in our day to day life forget about coding and anything whenever uh, suppose uh, we are uh, sleeping uh, suppose we are sleeping and uh, we got a mosquito bite okay how it will be no the uh, brain of the human body will take the event or will i uh, identify the event whenever the mosquito will bite that will be identified by the brain okay and how it will handle that event by instruct the other hand to get a slap or to just uh, give a uh, huge bite okay so in this way the action of the event will be associated with the occurrence of the event if the mosquito will not sit in my hand or will not bite me then my brain doesn't instruct my other hand to give a tight slap right so in this way in programming coding also you have to understand whenever you want to execute a code you create an event on occurrence of that event only that bunch of code will be going to execute fine so there are various example of event that is loading a page in a web browser whenever we are executing or we are um, saving a file with dot html then immediately when we are opening the browser to execute that program that is also one uh, event handling when the browser is loading some pages similarly mouse click by the user pressing any key or closing any window there are various event will occur during your program or during the user involvement inside the program so that has to be handled by the coder or by the programmer through the event handling concept what action has performed when any event is occurred is known as event handling as i have told you for the action that has to be performed after occurring the event it's called as your event handling so html5 allows a bunch of events of various actions so that the scripting can be executed and managed properly okay no need to take bother about creating any event or how you will handle the event as HTML5 will provide a bunch of various inbuilt event so that you can directly use that event and only the thing is you have to write the action what action you want to execute for that particular event okay so some of the common examples are on click on drag on mouse over on key down let me show you uh, in your slm also there are a various uh, bunch of events are displayed in a tabular format which is specifically available in html5 without html5 some of the event may not be activated may not be used or may not be able to execute but html5 will allow a huge category of event those are displayed in your uh, study material so please you go through the study materials here in tabular format the event name that is the attribute name what value that means whether it is used inside script or not that has to be taken and what task it will perform whenever we are triggering an event what it will do that are written so i request all of you to please go through this okay so just a single example let's suppose 
on mouse over i have just uh, kept a demo for your mouse over event handling because every student has a uh, enthusiastic to know about the events more betterly so i have just clicked a mouse over what is the meaning of mouse over that means whenever we are taking the mouse pointer near that area some action will automatically happen because dragging of the mouse or uh, moving of the mouse is itself uh, identified as a event so just write uh, i have written the code simply i have created a function in the name of over it is a non parametric function what i have written here document dot write mouse over that means whenever the event will occur whenever the mouse pointer will move this message has to be displayed as it is written inside right okay so when i am calling this over function i have directly use on mouse over this is my event name nothing to write just like i have used on click a keyword similarly it is on mouse over is a keyword so whenever on mouse over is there your over function will be executed and display this message okay here i have used the division tag so as i have discussed how you use the division tag if inside the browser you want a specific area to execute some specific code there you have to use the div tag okay so i have used the div tag to display the message and also to execute a on mouse over event okay so let's see whether it will work or not event look this is my code which is executed and currently my pointer is in this area right my pointer is above the browser here whatever i have written bring your mouse inside the division to see the result and below this line my division area is started so in the division area there is a message i have written this is inside the division right that message is displayed but till now no event has occurred so what is my event on mouse over that means whenever i will move the mouse pointer to this area automatically that event will generate and it will show the message mouse over okay got it let me execute first this is my program without the occurrence of the event when i will take the mouse here the event will occur and you display the message that is written in my over function so in this way you can able to use various event name directly by creating just taking the event attribute okay but what task you have to perform behind the event that has to be written inside a function or inside a separate group or module and hence function plays a vital role during an event handling concept okay i just want to show you this example to get you relate with the function how the function will able to execute when we are creating an event or we are executing an event that is the only thing i want to display with you fine so next we will move to the dialog boxes okay 
डायलॉग बॉक्स मीन्स दिस इज अनादर टाइप ऑफ बिल्ट इन कैटेगोरी जस्ट लाइक योर बिल्ट इन फंक्शन ओनली गॉट एंड यूज नो नीड टू राइट और नो नीड टू बॉदर अबाउट इट्स कोडिंग सिमिलरली देर आर वेरियस ग्राफिकल विंडोज आर डिजाइन इन जावा स्क्रिप्ट एंड दैट कैन बी अलाउड बाय द प्रोग्रामर to directly use as a ready made window you no need to design it you no need to write it just you have to change the content so that type of thing is called as your dialog box in javascript or in any other programming language also okay so javascript specifically supports three important type of dialog boxes before going to the type of dialog boxes why it is named as dialog okay what is the meaning of dialog dialog means interaction when there will be a presence of two different entity two different people and they are talking with each other they are uh, transferring the knowledge that means it is called as dialog one is sending something another is receiving again another is sending something one is receiving similarly during a javascript program when the program and the user need to interact with each other at the time your dialog box is mostly required okay so the three important dialog box this dialog box is can be used to raise an alert when we need an interaction between the program and the user suppose the program want to alert something or give a message to the user that is called as your raise an alert or to get confirmation whether the user want to continue or not yes or no to get that confirmation by the program or any input or to have a kind of input from the user when the program will need from the input from the user look whenever we are taking the example of parameterized function we are directly give the value inside the body tag inside the calling of the function right but all the cases is not like the same sometime you need to take the value directly on time dynamically from the user when the user will use at that time it has to put the value so the program will doesn't know about what value the user will put so at that time your uh dialog boxes can play the role to get the input from the user okay so for mostly three different purpose we are taking the help of dialog box one is for alerting message second to get confirmation about the input and third to have a kind of input from the user okay so on basis of this type of job your dialog boxes are divided into three different category one is alert box second is confirmation box and third is your prompt box right so what is a alert box to give a warning message to the user whenever we want to just give a message suppose we are uh, filling an online form filler and we have to write a name in the name text box but mischievously or by mistakely some user will enter number in that field so how the program or how the script or browser will prevent that it will provide a alert message no you have to enter a character at that time your alert box will used okay similarly confirmation box mostly used to take user consent whenever we want to ask the user whether you want to uh, continue yes or no or whether any question is arise which have two different value either true or false in that case your confirmation box is used it always take two different binary value one is for true another is for false right and in the third is your prompt box okay so prompt box to get interact with the user whenever we are asking some asking the user to input some value at the time your prompt box is used okay just uh, i have taken a example directly just have a look of the alert box 
here is the program code where function one is there what function one will do it will call the alert dialog box okay by default the alert command is used it is a built in function okay what this function will do it will generate this message box okay so it will generate this message box this is called as your alert message fine remember alert message doesn't have any acceptance capability it just only shows the message that you have written inside the alert function this is a warning message so here it is displayed this is a warning message and there will only a single okay button is there fine so whenever you will click on the okay once again you will return to the previous page where you have generate the alert message so this is the thing and when we call the one function here on button click me the one function is there as we have already discussed this part so uh, when this alert message will arise whenever i will click on this it will display me the message and the box will be appear okay fine so this is your usage of alert box similarly there will be another usage of confirmation box look in the confirmation box you have to get the input value you have to uh, give a consent from the user to the programmer or user to the uh, browser so there will be two value if you will click on okay that means it consists as true if you will click on cancel that means it consists as false so for both true and false value you have to write different message so uh, that uh, remember the confirmation box will be called out by the user defined function confirm so in my built in function in my uh, sorry in my user defined function get confirmation i have called the built in function confirm just like alert is alert function is for alert box confirm function is for confirmation box okay so first message will display do you want to continue it will be displayed as it is so whatever value it is written because the user have to click on either okay or either cancel right so if it will click on okay that means the value written is true so you have to kept a return variable for accepting the return type remember i have told whenever we are using the return type function then we have to kept a variable outside the function to cap or to hold the return value so for the confirmation confirmation box uh, the return value should be there in a variable now <coughs> you can compare the value if the value is true that means display a message user want to continue return true else if the user will click on cancel that means it is false user doesn't want to continue return false that means that program will be aborted fine so in this way you can use the confirmation box inside the function or inside any query in the program where you want to get the consent from the user yes or no this type of thing will be done with the confirmation box similarly another thing when you are not allowing the user to not only give the consent you are wanting to take some value from the user at that case the prompt box is used so prompt box can be called through your prompt function so what does that prompt function will do it is displayed just like that with a okay button cancel button and another uh, text area why the text area because the user have to input some value for that where it want where we it uh, uh, it is going to input the value it has to be a text box where the user will put its input value right 
so it will in uh, put the value in the text box and then it has to click on okay so once again if it will click on okay this value will be stored if it will click on cancel the value will not store so this in this way your prompt box will help the program or the browser to get input from the user directly okay no need to write or no need to create the button no need to create the text box no need to create the labels a uh, ready made built in window is already there only just writing a single function name fine so in this way <coughs> we can going to use our various dialog boxes to interact with the user so that the program or the code you have uh, executing as a script will be more lively to the user more interactive to the user okay so in this way we are going to end today's program uh, there are another thing is uh, in your block too that is your cookies right so in today's class i am not going to um, describe what is cookies because that cookies part is mostly related to your block 3 so in the next class whenever we are starting your block 3 in that part first of all we will understand what is a cookie what is the need of a cookie and then we will discuss the other part in your block 3 so with that uh, thank you so much and i would like thank to thank you ma'am yes sir thank you ma'am for a wonderful session so we have some questions of learners we will discuss one after another i am reading yes. uh, read, reading it out okay so <clears throat> Ha huh. the first question how to call data from a database to input variables value in a function how to call data from a database to input database? value ha ha to input variables yes input variables values in a function okay so uh, according to the function type there is nothing to do whenever we are using the variable name in that part you have to give the path of the database and you have to link the database through your href tag okay so uh, before calling the function or before defining the function it is better you get uh, attach the database file with the href tag with your browser code so that the browser will allow to get the data from the database and in a simple name you can store the data one after another inside a for loop and directly you can use that inside your function definition whatever question you have asked it has two different part one part is first you have to uh, get attached with the database uh, with the browser through your href tag and linking all that part then you have to accept the data to your code before the function definition and in the function you can only take a variable which will accept that data and then execute the function as it is okay so directly the database is not related to function it is related to javascript and before executing that function you have to uh, take the data from the database through your href tag i hope uh, you, you can have... yes yes so next uh, question ma'am is it be essential to maintain alignment justification while writing code lines in a pair of statements uh actually sir it is uh, called as just practice of writing so whenever we are going to writing just uh, 5 to 10 number of lines the alignment thing is not bother because we can able to view one and uh, all each and every line one by one but suppose we are going to write a 10000 line of code and where we have used 100 different number of function user defined function in that case it is better 
to maintain a specific alignment space for starting of the function the body part of the function where the code or where the function is called it is better to maintain a specific alignment so that you can able to connect each and every line in most of the time what uh, we have faced problem when we are writing a large code the number of curly braces when to uh, start the curly braces where to close the curly braces if we were using nested function then again there will be a headache of how many opening curly braces are there and how many closing curly braces are there whether they will be kept in a proper place or not in this way there will be several problems arise during writing a program so it is a good habit to maintain the alignment during writing the program so that even if you will refer letter or even if some other person will view the code it will relate to the uh, specification of where the function is started where the function is end where the other modular concept is there so it will be easier to uh, in uh, view the code and understand the code that's why only the alignment is there okay ma'am next is why are we using javascript in dot html code why we are using javascript in dot html code i have uh, i think i have uh, also answered it in our previous classes again i will explain it because okay. javascript is not a, a full fledged scripting language javascript is not understandable by the browser browser can only understand the markup language that is your html the tag right so whenever we are writing the programming concept we have to bind or we have to encapsulate that programming code into some tag and for that we are using the script tag and script tag is also a tag so it has to be written inside your html tag and the uh, file is also need to be saved in dot html fine if you are keeping the javascript in a special file then you can save it as dot js as i have um, demonstrated it in the previous class you can keep it as dot js file and later you can call that file in your java code or sorry in your html code but if you are using scripting tag you have to be save it in dot html extension okay ma'am next okay so i request all learners if any further question then they can unmute their mic and directly ask question to ma'am otherwise we will wind up the session here जदि कहार किसी क्वेश्चन अच्छी से मैंने डायरेक्टली मैडम को पचारी पारे बाय अनम्यूटिंग दियार माइक अदरवाइज आम ये सेसन स्टप कर uh sorry uh, you you are not clearly audible please uh, repeat your question hello madam what is the bootstrap and uh, what is the relation to uh, uh, scripting language and uh, html language uh, etc i think okay uh, uh, yes sir uh, that i am going to discuss in the next class that is uh, the part in your block 3 where we are uh, discussing about the cookies the bootstrap uh, and how it will uh, execute or what is the need of scripting language for uh, such type of thing okay so just uh, give me a excuse for this class because this topic will be covered up in your block 3 thank you ma'am okay, if anyone ma then okay ma'am yes sir it's me on it's me on web panda yeah, yes anub can we using this uh, app in oracle software 
look on web here i am not using any app here i am simply demonstrating the programs in your notepad right so if you want to you use any ide that is not app that is ide then uh, then that uh, oracle also have specific ides for its scripting language so you can refer to that also there are a second question uh, how to display in this time you not closing this programming light uh, text in closing text uh closing anubhav, i am not getting your question uh please show your uh, in chat please the closing text closing Let text me see. how to display in this time which time not close this program like this text uh look uh, when we are using function we need to close the curly braces we have to start the function with the curly braces and we need to close the uh, function with the curly braces i don't think in any other case in uh, in any other case inside html the use of curly braces is there when you are using function then only the involvement of your curly braces is there okay okay madam thank you thank you ma'am for clearing all the doubts and thank you for a brilliant presentations and class so thank you so much sir uh, so thank you bhavesh sir for uh, your uh, for his technical support so now we will wind up session here thank you all the dear learners thank you thank sir thank you all